Good morning to all of you. Hope you are all doing well. Welcome to lecture six in quadratic expressions. Hope you have watched all the previous five lectures in order to follow lecture six. Okay. In this lecture, we'll be discussing sketching of the graph y is equal to ax square plus bx plus c using graphical transformations. I'll be introducing graphical transformations in this lecture. Discuss some changes in the magnitude of quadratic expressions and will be introduced to the concept of quadratic inequalities and we'll, we'll sketch some quadratic inequalities. Okay. I'll be, we are, I think we will solve one problem in quadratic inequalities. Okay. Now let us discuss how to sketch the graph of ax square plus bx plus c. Before, before sketching the graph of ax square plus bx plus c, let us study some basic graphs. Okay, upon studying these basic graphs, we'll be able to draw the graphs of those ax square plus bx plus c. The basic graph which I'm considering right now is the graph of x square in the region minus two to two. Okay, so whenever somebody asks you to somebody asks you how to draw the graph, draw a graph of x square, what will you do? Usually, I will tabulate the values. Here, I have taken uh, x values in one column and other uh, in f of x values in the other column. I have taken these values minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, comma 2. And similarly, uh, accordingly, I have calculated f of x values also. Now, after computing these two, I will take this x comma f of x as a point and I am going to join them. This is what I have to do. Now, if I do that, this is the graph I am going to get. Okay, This is the graph of x square if x lies between minus 2 to 2. Now, in general, if at all, x values are not specified the graph of x square that means if at all we increase the values of x and we are going to get the curve like this now the general graph of x square if at all i am not mentioning any interval how does the graph looks like let us see this is how the graph looks like as x increases accordingly the y, uh, y values also increases okay this graph also, this graph has another name called parabola. Maybe we'll be discussing this parabola in the second semester. Geometry in the second semester, there will be a coordinate geometry part in that we'll discuss in detail about this. Okay. Now, now we'll study the graph of AX square actually. Okay graph of ax square where a is a real number okay now i have drawn the graphs of with the help of some uh, graphic calculator i have drawn all the graphs okay let me tell what are those graphs okay the graphs are y is equal to 0 0.1 x square y is equal to 0 0.5 x square y is equal to x square and uh, y is equal to y is equal to okay i think it is uh, it is 0 0.25 x square okay let me see so it is 0 0.1 x square the first graph is 0 point then this green color curve is y is equal to 0 0.1 x square graph and uh, this black color graph is y is equal to 0 0.5 x square graph and this orange color graph is y is equal to x square and the violet color graph is y is equal to 3 x square actually i have done a mistake here so this graph must be 3 x square and here also I am correcting that it is 3x square. Okay. Now, after looking at these graphs, of course, there are four curves actually. Of course, all those graphs looks like the previous graph x square. 
only thing what we have done here is we have multiplied a constant a we have multiplied a constant a to the graph x square now these are this is this is how the graphs looks like now what are our observations let us see okay see you look at the values of a as a a increases okay let me take values from 0.1 0 0.1 the graph is little stretched here now when it is 0. a increased from 0 to 0. 0.5 then the graph is shrinking and little further i have increased the value of a it it, it is shrinking little further and if at all i am increasing the value of a to 3 it is further shrinked okay now these are our observations if 0 if a lies between 0 to 1 then the graph is vertically compressed vertically compressed means horizontally it is going to expand or stretch okay now another observation here is if a is greater than 1 then the graph of x square is vertically stretched vertically stretched means horizontally it becomes narrowing down okay now this is one part in the last slide we have discussed the graph of y is equal to ax square now in this slide we are going to discuss the graph of y is equal to minus x is minus ax square now here with the help of some graphing calculator i have plotted the graphs of y is equal to minus ax square where y a takes some different values okay here are the graphs this is the graph of y is equal to x square and this violet color or purple color graph purple color is the graph of y is equal to minus x square and this y this is the graph of y is equal to minus 0 0.1 x square and this this is the innermost to curve is the graph of y is equal to minus 3x square now here are some points to be noted the first point is the graph y is equal to minus ax square is called reflection of y is equal to ax square about x axis because if you observe this y is equal to x square it is exactly the mirror image of it is exactly the mirror image of y is equal to x square and this uh, x axis acts as a mirror actually that's why it is called reflection of a graph about x axis and the next point is as we have seen if a lies between 0 to 1 the graph of x square vert is vertically compressed in the downward direction see in the last slide also we have noted down this point but here what is happening is it has happening in the upward direction now it is happening in the downward direction the next point is if a is greater than 1 the graph of x square is vertically stretched in the downward direction okay so hope you have understood this point uh, one particular particular point is uh, this y is equal to minus x square is called reflection of y is equal to ax square in general in general in general if y is equal to in general if y is equal to f of x is a graph of a function then y is equal to the graph of y is equal to minus f of x is called is called reflection of reflection of f of x about x axis we will say so maybe in the in the form of a table i will be giving it towards the end discuss some more modifications this is called horizontal translation of the graph horizontal translation of the graph and uh, what is the modification that i am doing here instead in place of x square what am i doing is x plus h whole square i have added h here 
okay now i have plotted the graphs of by taking some values of h actually so here if you observe it this is y is equal to x square we have seen this now when x h is equal to minus 10 the graph he is here and h is equal to plus 10 h is equal to plus 10 then the graph is here of course the basic structure of the graph remains same but if you observe it in this case it has shifted horizontally right side in this case it is shifted horizontally to the left side okay so what are our observations here the observations are if h is negative the graph of x square shifts right side horizontally h units okay and if h is positive then the graph of x square shifts left side horizontally h units so i am talking h positive h negative maybe i'll actually these many uh, here i have to tell mod h units okay because uh, h positive h negative i am talking so we will have a confusion how like how many h units h unit means h units means negative positive okay so here what am i telling is mod h units it is shifting right side or mod h units it is shifting left side okay so if you observe it here if i am placing h is equal to 10 h is positive here then what is happening it is shifting left side if h is equal to h is negative that is h is minus 10 the graph is shifting horizontally h units right side okay this is one more observation that means if this is the modification that i have done in place of x i have replaced with x plus h now we'll see we'll do one more modification that is vertical translation of the graph so what is the modification i have done it here in place of y i have written y plus k and x square i did not do anything in this case we'll see what is happening here okay i have drawn the graph of uh, these the, the the these curves these functions y minus 10 is equal to x square y is equal to x square y plus 20 actually this must be this is actually this is 20 you can see it is 20 here okay so in this case if you see this is the basic graph this is the basic graph and when i am substituting minus 20 the graph same graph shifted upwards and if i am substituting 20 here the same graph is shifted downwards that means the graph is tra getting translated on a vertical axis or it is the, the moment is vertical that's why the name vertical translation is being given so here we have to we have to be clear when the graph is shifted vertical or translated vertically in the upward direction or in the downward direction okay it all depends on the sign of k okay these are the observations here if k is negative then the graph of x square shifts upwards vertically by again here mod h units the next observation is if k is a positive then the graph of x square shifts downwards vertically mod h units again okay so if at all we are doing some little modifications the basic graph remains same in one case it is stretching and compressing in another case it is shifting that means the graph is shifting left or right in this case it is shifting upward or downward okay now we are ready to draw 
or we are ready to sketch a graph of ax square plus bx plus c let me consider an example so i am interested in drawing or sketching the graph of y is equal to x y is equal to x square plus 2x plus 2 so we you know the graph of y is equal to x square in the beginning we have seen it now we are ready to draw the graph of y is equal to x square plus 2x plus 2 now how are we going to draw this so there are uh, steps to be followed we have to follow certain steps in order to find in order to sketch the graph easily so the first step is you have to complete the square which we have seen in the earlier classes how to complete a square this is how you have to complete the square so what you have to do is see this is x square plus 2x plus 2 is there now i have to complete this quadratic part square x square plus 2 into 1 into x plus i have to add 1 square and subtract 1 square plus 2 here so this is going to become these three terms together this becomes x plus 1 whole square and the leftover term is 1 so this is how one can complete a square of a given quadratic expression okay i think this technique we have seen it earlier maybe if you review those classes you can will be able to write it like this okay now this is what y is equal to x plus 1 all square plus 1 now that th this one what i have done is i have transferred it it is not transfer okay uh, i have transferred it in this set then it becomes y minus 1 is equal to x plus 1 whole square okay now observe whether the graph x square is stretching stretching or shrinking or horizontal shifting or or vertical shifting or a combination of any one of the above okay so we have seen three things namely stretching and shrinking horizontal shifting and vertical shifting okay now if you observe it is there any shrinking or bulging or shrinking or expanding so you have to look at the coefficient of x square x plus 1 whole square here so there is no shrinking or or bulging of the graph so here there is only a change in x and there is only a change in y place so what are our observations in the given problem the graph x square is translated vertically upwards by one unit because you have this plus one here vertically up vertically up is indicated by y minus one okay y minus one in the just now in the previous slide you have seen it okay minus one is it now after doing that vertically upward by one unit and horizontally horizontally translated left by one unit so the graph of y is equal to x square plus 2x plus 2 is so the graph would be like here the graph will be here and it is translated one unit upwards okay so in this case okay first of all it has shifted left side one unit and then translated upward one unit here you can see that here. okay this is how one can sketch the graph with the help of the translations vertical horizontal and uh, stretching and shrinking of the graphs so let me discuss one more example here is that example the sketch the graph of 2x square plus 4x plus 4 here okay again we have to do the same steps first we have to complete the square after completing the square i am getting an expression of this type okay now if you observe it there is a stretching the, 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 this indicates actually if a in the place of a you have got two two indicates a, a is greater than one so it must shrink actually so three things happen here the graph gets shrinked first 
and uh, there is a vertical translation and there is a horizontal translation okay now this is what these, these are our observations okay in the given problem what actually is happening the graph x square is getting shrinked because of this two factor and translated vertically up by two units how what will be deciding factor uh, what is, uh, y is replaced with what y minus two so whenever this is minus two it, the graph tran the graph will translate vertically up and x plus one and x plus one indicates whenever this is positive it shifts left side by how many units one unit okay so how does the graph looks like now let us see the answer so this is how the graph looks like so first what is being done the graph got shrinked first and afterwards there is a horizontal horizontally it has shifted one unit here so if you look at this here it is one unit okay now vertically it has moved how many units vertically it has moved two units so the graph is like this okay this is the final output i can practice some more examples okay with the with with this with this technique with this technique see this technique is generally being followed for any type of graphs you take some basic graph and you do these modifications x is replaced with some x plus h y is replaced with y y plus k or y minus k then the the same story repeats actually if you know some basic graphs if some modification with those modifications uh, you are asked to sketch the graphs you can easily draw see whatever i have discussed now the same things are being applicable to all types of graphs actually okay now now we'll discuss changes in the magnitude of a quadratic expression with the help of a graph actually okay so suppose let us suppose that a is positive then the following are true this is what these are the some statements that are being given what does what is that let us try to understand let f of x is equal to a x square plus b x plus c okay the first one is if x tends to minus infinity remember when a is positive the graph b is for upward only the graph like the graph will be u-shaped parabola like this Okay, when x, x is equal to as x approaches minus infinity, that means in this up, in this direction it is approaching, then f of x approaches infinity actually. Here it must be infinity because as x approaches, it is it is the values of f of x increases, so it approaches okay now if x approaches so far we have discussed horizontal translation vertical translation reflection about x-axis vertical stretch or vertical compression of the graph y is equal to x square okay these are also called graphical transformations of the given function okay now with the help of these graphical transformations we are in a position to draw the graphs of y is equal to ax square plus bx plus c now let us sketch the graphs of some quadratic expression here is the first example we have to sketch the graph of ax uh, x square plus 2x plus 2 actually so what is the first step that we have to do here is the completion of the square here is the completion of the square so what exactly you have to do x square plus 2x plus 2 so x square plus 2 into 1x 1 into x in order to complete the square i have added and subtracted one here one square okay and rest of the steps you can follow here ultimately we have to arrive an expression of the form y minus 1 is equal to x plus 1 whole square okay now you have to check in this after getting into after getting the expression into this form whether you have, you have to check whether is there any reflection horizontal uh, vertical compression or vertical stretch 
if you replace y minus 1 with y, if you replace x plus 1 with x, then you get y is equal to x square. So the graph is intact. So there is no reflection or no vertical stretch or a horizontal stretch. So first we have to draw the graph of y is equal to x square. Observation is no reflection about x axis. Now what is the next step that we have to do is have to either draw horizontal translation or vertical translation. There are both the translations here. Horizontally also the graph is translated and vertically also it is translated. Now we'll go with what uh, horizontal translation. Horizontally, how many units it has translated? One unit, left or right? It is left actually. So here is a graph of it, okay? Now this graph actually is translated left by one unit, okay? Now this is the graph of y is equal to x plus one whole square. Now after doing this, now we have to go with the vertical translation. So this graph is moving up actually, or is translating up by one unit actually. So here is the graph of it. So this graph is translated one unit up actually. So this is the graph of y minus one is equal to x plus one whole square, which is the required graph actually, okay? This is how one can sketch the graph of a given quadratic expression. Let us see the next example. Sketch the graph of two x square plus four x plus four actually. Again, the first step is the completion of the squares. Here is the completion of the square. So first what you have to do is here two, I am taking out common. So x square plus two x, plus two actually. In order to complete the square, I have added and subtracted one square here. Rest of the calculations you can follow. Ultimately, we have arrived at this kind of an expression. Y minus two is equal to two into X plus one whole square. Now observe that if you replace Y minus two with Y and X plus one with X, then it is the, the graph is Y is equal to two X square. So Y is equal to two X square means it is a vertical compression vertical compression or vertical stretch it is vertical stretch actually so the graph y is equal to x square gets a shrink here so first you have to draw the graph of y is equal to 2x square here is the graph of it y is equal to 2x square vertically stretching or shrinking of the graph y is equal to x square after this as you have did as you did in the last case either you have to take the horizontal translation or a vertical translation here we go with the horizontal translation here is the horizontal translation. Horizontally, how many units it has shifted? It is shifted horizontally by one unit, left or right. But since it is plus one, it is left actually. So you can see the graph of it. So it is translated left by one unit. And afterwards, you have to sketch the vertical translation. Vertically, how, how, how many units it has traveled? Vertically up by two units. Here is the graph of it. So this is the graph of y minus two is equal to two into x plus one whole square. This is the graph of two x square plus four x plus four, the given quadratic expression. Now let us see the third example. Here is the third example. Sketch the graph of 10 x minus x square minus 16 actually. So again, as we did in the previous two cases, first you have to complete the square. So first I have completed the square minus I have taken common x square minus two into five x plus. I have added and subtracted five square here, okay? And after, after doing all the simplifications, I get y is equal to minus of x minus five whole square plus all this stuff you do. And you ultimately you get, uh, arrive at this expression, y minus nine is equal to minus of x minus five whole square. Replace y minus nine with y, x minus five with x then i get y is equal to minus x square so clearly here there is a reflection reflection of the graph y is equal to x square now first you have to draw the reflection of the graph y is equal to x square this is the reflection of the graph y is equal to x square so reflection about x axis y is equal to minus x axis. afterwards you have you have to draw the horizontal or horizontal or vertical translation now we will follow the horizontal translation Horizontal translation first. So horizontally, how many units it has traveled? Five units, left or right, it is towards right. Okay, so the graph is translated five units towards right, okay? And after drawing, this is the graph of y is equal to minus of x minus five whole square. And afterwards you have to 
go for the vertical translation. Here is a graph of it. Vertically, how many units it has traveled? Nine units. Okay, this is the final graph. Actually, this is the graph of the required quadratic expression. Okay, hope you have understood how to sketch the graphs of these quadratic expression. Okay, with these three examples, you try some other examples also. Okay, now in the form of a consolidation, we have given this table and function notation. What is the changes that are occurring in the function and the type of transformation that is being done mathematically and uh, coordinate uh, change of the coordinate system. I hope almost every point is being discussed except reflection over y axis and uh, horizontal compression and horizontal stretch. So, this you try to explore yourself from this table. Okay. Next, in the next slide, we have got the changes in the magnitude of a quadratic expression. Okay. Let us see what changes you are going to get in the magnitude of a quadratic expression. So, here is the graph of uh, y is equal to x square plus bx plus c, where a is positive. Suppose that a is positive, then the following statements are true. Let us see what are those points. Okay, the first point, let f of x is equal to x square plus bx plus c. Okay, if x tends to minus infinity, then f of x is also, f of x tends to plus infinity. It is evident from the graph. So, if a is a positive, then x approaches to in minus infinity also, the y value is increasing in the positive direction. So, as x approaches minus infinity, then f of x approaches infinity. Okay. The second point is if x uh, is approaching positive infinity, where does f of x approaches? f of x also approaches positive infinity. This is also evident. Okay. Now you can you can tell you can see you know that when x is equal to minus b by 2a, what is the y value? 4ac minus b squared divided by 4a. This is the point that is not uh, that is indicated here. Now, let us see what is this point tells you. When x increases from minus infinity to minus b by 2a, then f of x decreases from positive infinity to 4ac minus b squared divided by 4a. This is what is happening. So, as we are approaching minus, we are approaching minus b by 2a from the left side, that is minus infinity to minus b by 2a. As x value increases from minus infinity to minus b by 2a, the y value decreases, decreases, decreases and reaches 4ac minus b square actually. Okay, from infinity to 4ac minus b square. Now, from this point, if you move towards positive infinity, what happens? Okay, minus b by 2a to positive infinity, then what happens? Then f of x increases from 4ac minus b square to infinity. So, these are some observations when A is positive. Similar such observations we are going to note down when A is negative. That's our next slide. So, changes in the magnitude of a quadratic expression when A is negative. This is the graph of a parabola, uh, sorry, y is equal to ax square plus bx plus c when A is negative here. Okay. So, f of x is equal to ax square plus bx plus c. So, if x is tending to minus infinity, f of x also tends to minus infinity. That means you can observe that if x is approaching minus infinity, then f of x is also approaching minus infinity. Here. Second point, as x approaches in the right direction, then f of x is approaching again in the negative direction, so f of x approaches minus infinity. What is the next point? When x increases from minus infinity to minus b by 2a. That means if it is coming from the left side to minus b by 2a, you can see that it increases from minus infinity to minus infinity to 4ac minus b squared divided by 4a. So, it is actually increasing. And now, the next point is, now when x approaches from minus b by 2a to positive infinity, positive infinity, then what happens? The f of x value decreases. So, decreases from this point of 4ac minus b square by 4a to minus infinity. Okay. So, these are the, these are the changes that happens in the magnitude of a given quadratic expression in two different cases. One is a positive and another one is a negative. 
So far, we have seen how to sketch the graphs of quadratic expression ax square plus bx plus c. Now, we'll see how to sketch quadratic inequalities and how to solve quadratic inequalities. So the title of the slide is sketching and solving of quadratic inequalities. Let's get into the definition of quadratic inequation. Here is the definition of quadratic inequation. A quadratic inequation in one variable is of the form ax square plus bx plus c greater than 0 or ax square plus bx plus c greater than or equal to 0 or ax square plus bx plus c less than 0 or ax square plus bx plus c less than or equal to 0 where a comma b comma c are real numbers such so that a not equal to 0. Remember here there is only condition on the leading coefficient a must not be equal to 0. b can be 0 or c can also be 0. Okay. Hope you have understood the definitions. Here are the some here are some examples. x square minus 2 greater than 0. In the second exam, in the first example, in the first example, you can observe that b coefficient is not there. So b is 0 here. Okay. Still it is a quadratic inequation. Okay, and uh, second one, anyway, it is of the form and third one, there is no problem and fourth one and C is equal to zero, A comma B not equal to zero. This is also a quadratic inequation. Okay, next comes the definition of the solution of a quadratic inequation. What, do, what is the solution actually? The values of those values of X satisfying the quadratic inequation are called the solutions of a quadratic inequation. Okay. I hope the here is an example x square minus 6x plus 8 less than or equal to 0. So for what values of x already we have seen these kind of questions in the last exercise. Now let us try to answer it. Solution of this one is for what values of x x square minus 6x plus 8 less than or equal to 0. If you factorize it the factors are 2 comma 4. Now you will be getting let me write it like this so this x square minus 6x plus 8 is equal to this x square maybe let me write it here x square minus 6x plus 8 is equal to x minus 2 into x minus 4 this less than 0 means this less than or equal to 0 and we have we have seen we have discussed the result based on this whenever x minus alpha and x minus beta less than or equal to 0 implies x belongs to that interval 2 to 4 actually so here since there is an equality here you have to write a closed bracket here hope you have understood the solution of this one is exactly that okay This is a quadratic inequation. Okay. Right. Now let us sketch some inequalities. Okay. So far we have seen how to sketch the graphs of quadratic expression. Now we will try to sketch the quadratic inequalities and solving the quadratic inequalities. Okay. So the title of the slide is sketching and solving of quadratic inequalities okay let us sketch quadratic inequalities first okay here is the first example sketch the region y is equal to x square minus x minus 12 less than or equal to 0 okay so what is the first step that you have to do in order to sketch any inequality is first you draw the sketch of the equality so here you have to draw the sketch of y is equal to x square minus x minus 12 actually so this is the first step first to sketch the graph of y here it is y is equal to x square minus x minus 12 actually and after after drawing this graph what you need to do actually you have to look for those values which satisfy the inequality okay look at those values of x satisfy the above inequality and sketch it actually okay so first 
will draw the graph, will sketch the graph of x square minus x minus 12. Of course, uh, previously you have seen how to sketch the graphs of a given quadratic expression. Okay, here is the graph of this quadratic expression y is equal to x square minus x minus 12. Okay, if you observe it, these points, okay, a comma b, which is in the graph, can you guess what exactly these points are? Okay, this graph is intersecting x axis. That means y is equal to 0. Here, these points are precisely the roots of the quadratic expression, uh, quadratic equation x square minus x minus 12 is equal to 0 or zeros of the quadratic expression. So, these points are actually the zeros of the quadratic expression. Okay, after drawing this, what we need to do now? What is that? What is that inequality that we are referring to? The y values must be less than or equal to zero. That means you have to look below the x-axis. Okay, for what values of x? The graph is below the x-axis. So if you look at these values, okay, the, for these values of x, the graph is below the x-axis. Now I have to share the region. Okay. Here is the region. Okay. So this is the region. This is the required region which satisfies the given inequality. Okay. Hope you have understood this. What is what is the first step? First, you have to draw for uh, sketching the region of any inequality. First, you have to sketch the graph of equality. Y is equal to that expression, whatever the given expression. Afterwards, after drawing that, now there you have to look for those values of x which satisfies the inequation okay let us see the next example sketch the region satisfied by both the inequations x square minus 3x minus 10 less than 0 and 10x minus x square minus 16. i think this example we have uh, sketched it actually now now you can try x square minus 3x minus 10 actually I'm giving both the sketches first. Okay, so the first step that we have to do is sketch the graphs of equalities. That means you have to draw the graph of y is equal to x square minus 3x minus 10 and y is equal to 10x minus x square minus 16. Okay, here are the graphs of both. Okay, so this green colored one is the graph of x square minus 3x minus 10 and the blue colored one is the graph. Okay, it is given in the pink anyway. So it is the graph of the second one, y is equal to 10x minus x square minus 16. Now afterwards, after sketching it, I have to look for those regions which satisfy the inequality. So first you have to see for uh, what x values this y value is less than 0. Okay, you can observe here for what values, the, for these values, for the values in between, this is minus 2, this is uh, green colored one is 5 actually these minus 2 comma 5 are precisely the zeros of x square minus 3x minus 10 actually you can substitute here x is equal to minus 2 minus 2 whole square is 4 4 minus 3 into minus 2 is plus 6 4 plus 6 is 10 10 minus 10 is equal to 0 and uh, 5 5 square is 25 minus 3 into 5 is 15 minus 10 is equal to 0. So these are the zeros actually minus 2 comma 5. So for values of x in between minus 2 and 5 y values are less than 0. Okay that means the, uh, the values of y are less than 0. Okay now it is this shaded region. Now you have to shade this region actually. Now coming to the next one uh, second graph y is equal to 10x minus x square minus 16. Now, what are the zeros of it actually? In in the graph, it is showing it is 2 comma 0 and 8 comma 0. Okay, you can check for example, uh, substitute x is equal to 2, uh, 10 into 2, 20, 20 minus 4 is 16, 16 minus 16 is 0. Okay, so 2 is a root, and next one is 8. 8 10 into 8 is 80, 80 minus 84, 8 square is 64, 80 minus 64 is 16, minus 16 is 0 actually, okay. So, this is 8 comma 0, okay. 
now we have to sketch the inequality so for what values of x this y is positive so if you look at these values of x here the y value is positive here okay so it is this region that we have to shade it actually here is the sketching of those two regions here we have sketched it okay now what you have to do is individual regions you have sketched now you have to find those values of x which satisfies both the inequalities now if you observe here in this region it is these for these values of x the second expression is negative and the first expression second expression is positive and the first expression is negative so what are these values the first value is 2 comma 0 and the second value is 5 comma 0 okay now you have to shade that region first okay so this is the common region actually this is the common region which satisfies the inequality so the answer is the interval 2 to 5 hope you have understood this example this is how one can solve simultaneous quadratic inequalities sketch the regions of simultaneous quadratic inequalities now we will discuss the methods of solving quadratic inequations okay the methods of solving inequations there are actually two methods the first one is algebraic method so in this method we find the solution of a quadratic inequality by applying the th three theorems that we have studied regarding the change of sign of quadratic expressions and the second method is the graphical method in this method we find the solution from the graph of the inequation already we have seen how to sketch uh, inequalities quadratic inequalities okay uh, let us solve one example in both algebraic method and a graphical method solve x square minus 10x plus 21 less than 0 so algebraic method says now if you look at the discriminant if you see the factors if you look at the factors, 7 and 3 are the factors actually okay 7 and 3 are the factors so x minus 7 into x minus 3 that expression can be factorized as x minus 3 into x minus 7 less than 0 and we have seen a result based on that x minus alpha into x minus beta less than 0 if and only if x belongs to the interval alpha to beta so if you apply that result we will get the solution for this quadratic inequation the solution of the given quadratic inequation is the interval 3 to 7. Now we will see the graphical method of solving the same inequation. Graphical method. We have to solve the inequation x square minus 10x plus 21 less than 0 using the graphical method. So first what we need to do is first sketch the graph of y is equal to x square minus 10x plus 21. Okay. Here is the graph of it. Okay. Now, after drawing the graph, what we need to do? We need to see those values of x which satisfy the inequation. So, for what values of x, the y value is less than 0. So, for these values of x, y will be less than 0. How to find out these points actually? These are nothing but these points are, the, these, these are called the intersection points of the graph and the x-axis these are precisely the zeros of it okay the zeros are namely 3 comma 7 okay in the next graph you can see that okay so here it is 3 comma 0 and 7 comma 0 in this region okay the y values are negative so this is the required region okay so what is the answer so for what values of x the given quadratic equation is satisfied uh, the, it satisfies for what what values of x satisfy the given quadratic inequation okay the x values lies between 3 to 7 okay the graph of the inequation is seen in the figure the values of x satisfying the inequation are 3 to 7 so the final answer the solution of the given inequation is 3 to 7 hope you have understood the example and uh, the two methods in which we have solved the given inequation.
Before getting into solving of quadratic inequalities, I thought of sharing you some points here in order to solve the inequalities. Here is the first point. Here is the first point. Okay. So, root f of x, whenever you are given with the function root f of x, this root f of x is defined if and only if. Okay f of x must be greater than or equal to 0. I hope you remember this point. You have seen this point in the chapter functions in the first year. Okay, first, first year, first semester. Anyway, for the sake of convenience, I am for the sake of familiarity, I am writing it again here. Okay, let me discuss one more result. Let a comma b are two real numbers greater than or equal to 0. Okay, these are two real numbers. Then, then we have a greater than b if and only if root a greater than root b. Okay. So, from this, this is an if and only if condition so from this what are the conclusions here whenever these are positive a is greater than b implies root a is greater than root b that means we can take the square roots on both sides provided a comma b greater than or equal to zero and what is the second result here that means root a greater than root b implies a is greater than b that means in this case we are squaring it okay this is also possible when a comma b greater than or equal to zero okay and the third point i maybe this will be this result will be useful x minus alpha into x minus beta less than zero implies x belongs to alpha to beta where alpha less than beta and the second point is x minus alpha into x minus beta greater than 0 implies x belongs to the interval minus infinity to alpha union beta to infinity. So as a corollary of this x square minus a square greater than 0 implies x minus a into x plus a greater than 0 implies x belongs to minus a to a. x belongs to the interval minus a to a. So I thought of uh, sharing you these points before solving the quadratic inequalities. Now let us solve some quadratic inequalities that are given in exercise 3c. Okay, so here is the quadratic inequality. So solve under root x minus 3 into 2 minus x less than under root 4x square plus 12x plus 11 using algebraic method. Okay, let us try to find out the solution of this. Here is the solution. Solution goes like this. So first of all, uh, this quantity must be defined. That means, so root of x minus 3 into 2 minus x is defined, is defined if and only if x minus 3 into 2 minus x must be greater than 0. This we have seen in the first year functions chapter. Okay, Under root some function, when is it defined, that function must be greater than or equal to 0. So, this must be greater than or equal to 0. So, so for what values of x this inequation gets satisfied implies x minus 3 into 
x minus 2 less than or equal to 0. Okay, I have taken one minus common and I have multiplied it. Then with the help of the result that we have studied already, you can write the solutions here. Okay, x belongs to the interval, closed interval 2 to 3. Okay, now this quantity under root 4x square plus 12x plus 11 is defined if and only if 4x square plus 12x plus 11 must be greater than or equal to 0. Now let us find out for what values of x this gets satisfied. Now let us find out the discriminant of this quadratic expression delta is equal to b square minus 4ac. b here is 12 square minus 4 into 4 into 11. So this is 144 minus 16 into 11 is 176 actually. So this quantity is going to be negative. So this implies the roots are complex. Roots are complex numbers. So if roots are complex numbers, so then you have to apply theorem 1. So by theorem 1, we have studied already. What does that say? So when is this quadratic expression is positive? If it, it, it is for what values of x this is positive means we have seen the a and the expression ax square plus bx plus c takes the same sign for all x belongs to r. So this implies by theorem 1 we get 4x square plus 12x plus 11 is greater than or equal to 0 strictly greater than 0 I can say strictly greater than 0 for all x belongs to reals okay so this is one more in this is one more solution that means in order to get these two quantities satisfied first of all x must belongs to this interval and x belongs to this interval okay now let us get into the quadratic inequality so here is the quadratic inequality x minus 3 into 2 minus x square is less than 4x square plus 12x plus 11 so these two quantities are positive because these are the square root quantities so this is 2 minus x so since these two quantities are positive, I can square it on both sides. Then I get x minus 3 into 2 minus x is less than 4x square plus 12x plus 11. So this implies, so this is uh, 2x minus x square minus 6 plus 3x is less than 4x square plus 12x plus 11 actually okay so let us rearrange the quantities 4x square and uh, here it becomes 5x square okay and here you have 12x and uh, 2 plus 3 it is 5x 12 minus 5 is 7 x and uh, the constant term is 17 17 this must be positive okay now we'll see for what values of x this expression is satisfied this inequality is satisfied okay let us look at the discriminant of this quadratic expression so it is delta is equal to p square minus 4 ac 7 square minus 4 into 5 into 17. 
so it is 49 minus 20 into 17 is minus 340 this quantity will be obviously negative implies roots of 5x square plus 7x plus 17 greater than 0 sorry greater than 0 it is not greater than 0 roots are complex roots are complex we'll continue the answer solution is continued here okay now we have to find out now we have got we have got roots of roots of 5x square plus 7x plus 17 are complex so if the roots of this quadratic expression or quadratic equation or complex implies by theorem 1 which we have studied earlier this expression is positive if uh, this expression and uh, the leading coefficient takes the same sign for all x belongs to r so by theorem 1 we have 5x square plus 7x plus 17 must be greater than 0 for all x belongs to r okay to get the final solution to get final solution we have to solve three inequations simultaneously okay the first one is x minus 3 into 2 minus x is greater than or equal to 0 and the second one is 4x square plus 12x plus 11 must be greater than or equal to 0 and the third one is 5x square plus 7x plus 17 is greater than or equal to 0 okay so what is the solution for this let me write the solutions here so the solution is for all x belongs to the closed interval 2 to 3 and for all x belongs to reals and here also for all x belongs to reals okay so the solution of the solution of the required inequation or the given inequation is given inequation is what the intersection of all the three solutions 2 to 3 intersection the real number set this is real number set so intersection of real number set and this set is 2 to 3 so the solution of the solution of the given inequation is is closed interval 2 to 3 okay